Hello everyone, this is a series of videos about the anatomy of the ear. After we are done with them, we will talk about the physiology of hearing in another set of videos. We will start with the general structure of the ear. We have the ear pinna, the external auditory canal, and we have the tympanic membrane and the ossicles, the vestibular system, the cochlea, and both of them connected to the vestibular cochlear nerve. The ear is divided into three parts, the external ear or the outer part, the middle part containing the tympanic membrane and the ossicles, the inner part containing the vestibule and the cochlea. Let us start with the outer part of the ear. We have here a cart cartilaginous folds. This is the helix, the anti-helix, the tragus, the anti-tragus, and near the opening we have the ear concha. And we have the lobule and the lobule is a skin containing fat cells in it so these whole structures are cartilaginous folds except for the lobule which is a skin containing fat functions of the ear pinna is the ear pinna is made for amplification of sounds uses of the external part of the ear the pinna the cartilage is used for the reconstruction of the structures of the middle ear and nasal align. And now we'll go more medially into the external auditory canal. The external auditory canal is situated in a position higher than the parotid gland. Its outer third is surrounded by cartilage and its inner third is surrounded by the temporal bone. So let us start with the outer part which is surrounded by a cartilage. Let's see the histology of the outer third of the external auditory canal. It is surrounded by cartilage. The cartilage is not continuous and contains a lot of gaps. And these gaps uh, are called fissures of Santorini. So these gaps make an infection transmit easily between the parotid gland and the external auditory canal or the reverse, especially in children. The canal contains four types of cells. A dermal cells are giving a thick skin, a ceraminous cells secreting ceramin or the ear wax, a sebaceous glands and a hair follicles. Let's see the functions of the earwax. It keeps the eardrum pliable, it lubricates the external auditory canal, and it acts as barrier for trapping foreign bodies, fungal spores, dust, and also it acts as bactericidal. It prevents the growth of bacteria. Now the inner two-third. The inner two-third is surrounded by the temporal bone, it is situated in the petrous part of the of the, the petrous part of the temporal bone. It contains no ceraminous glands, no sebaceous glands, contains no hair follicles, and a thin skin. The whole length of the external auditory canal is 2.5 centimeters on average. And finally, 
we'll talk about the innervation of the external ear. Now there is a nerve, a branch coming from the trigeminal nerve named the mandibular, which is the lower branch. Uh, it gives a branch named auriculotemporal nerve. It gives a branch named auriculotemporal nerve. And now with the innervation of the external auditory canal, we have number one, a trigeminal nerve. It gives a branch named the mandibular branch, which is the lower part, or V3, giving a branch named auriculotemporal nerve. Second, we have from the spinal cord, from C2, a branch named the lesser occipital nerve. Also from the spinal cord C2 and C3, we have the greater auricular nerve. And from the vagus and the facial nerve, we have branches named auricular nerves. So this is all about the external ear. In the next videos, we'll be talking about the middle ear and then the inner ear. Thank you.